Well, of course, I had no option. No. National service. National service. And <clears throat> I suppose I was rather busy, you know, in the early days of my profession, so I didn't realise that the national service was coming to end in 1960. Right. Uh, otherwise, I might have done some higher yeah. exams that I did after national service. And like some of my friends did, managed to get, uh, yeah. you know, avoid it. So but were it, you sort of in your education still continuing in your studies? Oh yeah. And then did you get called up or? Oh, uh, I'd finished, I'd, I'd I was a, I'd qualified as a doctor and I'd yeah. done three posts, the uh, house officer in surgery, medicine and obstetrics. Right. And, uh, well, it was something that you wanted to get over with, yeah. so you could continue your career. Your career, yeah. And uh, so, I, the last uh, chap I worked for did offer to get me a senior house office job in obstetrics, and uh, then uh, go for a postponement going in for a year. Or so. Ah, so you could postpone if I you were in. Yeah, if, yeah. If you were, if in, you were in a training, yeah, you could. yeah. Because uh, that meant you the army got a. Uh, yeah. uh, I qualified chap. Yes, and I suppose... I, I did hear of one chap that went in just about the time he became a consultant. Oh. So he went in, because he was so highly qualified, as a major. Oh, so you went in at a higher level of went rank. Went in at a very high level. But right. most of us were... Uh, well, all of us were just qualified just, and had done yeah. either a year after being qualification or 18 months. So were you about, what, early 20s? Uh, I'd be 20, oh, let's see, 1958. I'd be coming up to, tw I'd be 25. 25, right, mm. so yeah, yeah, yeah. And so did you go and do your training first? In What happened when, when you, you were called up? <laughs> well, the training consisted of six weeks. <laughs> right. And two weeks were square bashing. <laughs> And uh, when you consider the first week, we spent the, all the day getting our uh, webbing and equipment, and we did, and were uh, supplied a grant. Yeah. And there were some posh London outfitters there, and we had to buy our own shirts and shoes and hats and the officer's top coat and things like that. Yeah. But because we're only in for two years, we weren't given the grant for a mess kit. Oh, right. So for myself, if I went to when I went to the uh, Officer mess dinner. I just wore a. Uh, well, I only went to one in England, but mm. you wore your dinner jackets. Yes. Now, in some of the top quality regiments, mm. uh, when the National Health Service, uh, the National Service, National Service, National Service doctors uh, yes. went in and refused to buy their mess kits because it was very, expensive. very expensive, and of course you wouldn't have uh, a lot of money. There was one. There was a row about that, but most ordinary regiments didn't yeah, mind. Didn't mind. So long as the uh, RMO was okay, they didn't mind what he did. Yes. So I went out off her to Aden by troop ship. Yes. Uh, it was half empty. Yeah. It's so boring, it put me off for life. How long did it take you to get there? About 10, 12 days. Oh, I think. right, okay. Uh, there were. There were all the volumes of Winston Churchill recently, uh, 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 recently published book. Yeah. There were about four volumes, seven hundred pages each, of the history of the English-speaking peoples. Oh. I read all four volumes on that troop ship yeah. because I was so bored. So bored. Yeah. And they didn't make you entertain the rest of the troops, did they? Because not my weather weren't there. Uh, there was only me in my cabin, which was made for four. Oh. Half the troop, uh, troop decks were empty. Yeah. And so it was a bit boring. I mean, the only exercise, I think, eight times round the uh, top decks equals a mile. Yeah, yeah. So running 24 times round the top deck every yeah. morning yeah. can be a bit boring. <laughs> and then we went into the uh, harbour, a massive big place. It's yeah. a fantastic harbour there. Yeah. And it was, we were hot and sweaty getting off. There were about six of us got off that ship. Mm. And there's another thing I remember is some old private, who must have been in the middle 40s, a bit thick. Yeah. It, it, you know, it made his career in the army, obviously, there was not much cook for yeah, yeah. anywhere else. Was saying, My God, there's six dots getting off this ship. What the hell's going to happen now? <laughs> well, nothing much happened. No, no. 
But we were picked up by a Lieutenant Colonel, RAMC. Yeah. And uh, he took us to a cafe and ordered him himself what they called it. It was called Stim Orange and Stim Lemon, the soft drinks. Oh, yeah. Lemon. Yeah. And he ordered himself a Stim one or the other and sat under a uh, umbrella in his tropical gear, living uh, us all standing around in battle dresses in the sun. Yeah. And starts regaling with the fact that the Jebel Akdar has just been captured. Oh. We didn't know what the world was talking about. What's he talking about? about? Yeah. Uh, and the fact that I would end up on that flaming Jebel for three or four months. Oh, did he? Eventually. Right. You know, and I recommended giving it back. Well, uh, there we are. <laughs> and uh, then we were told where to go and went into this horrible transit camp. Did you? Where we stayed for uh, about five, two or three, well, we know, we were, we were given instructions where to get our travel kit, where to buy stuff from, and yeah. where we were to stay. Yeah. And we were to sleep and have room. Uh, tents in the transit camp, right. but we could eat at the officers' mess, Kumaksa RAF officers' mess, yeah. and uh, it was a horrible place. I mean, they didn't, it wasn't too bad in the daytime, but we were next yeah. to a sort of brackish area where, I mean, there were hundreds of flamingos there, so there's yeah. obviously probably lots of little things growing, yes. but at night time, you could say about 10 million mosquitoes, mosquitoes. moved in for dinner. Yeah, yeah. And I can certainly remember one of our chaps woke up in the morning halfway through the night and went back to sleep at both ends. <gasps> yeah. Were at, against the elbows, were against the side of his mosquito net. Yeah. Next day his elbows, elbows were swollen. Were swollen. <gasps> and that's when we started on palliadrin, and yeah. malaria. Yeah. In the morning, sulfaguanidine, two grams for uh, to prevent diarrhea, and yeah. a gram salt tablet. And yeah. that's, everybody was supposed to be on that. And how did you find the heat? I mean, was it? It very, was awful. Was it awful? It was yeah. awful. Uh, I mean, uh, let's put it. We didn't go there. This was the the, the nice season. Yeah. So it was so when it wasn't very hot. We, right? we eventually began to like that because yeah. it was dry, but it was hot. Hot. Yeah. And it, uh, in the summertime, it was not only it was hot but very sticky, a humidity yeah. about 95. I mean, you know, nobody had air conditioning. No, no. Nobody. I no. mean, they, like, some of the shops and modern places would have air conditioning, but mm. there was nothing where well, we were. nothing where you were, no. Probably no. Lieutenant Colonels and such like had air conditioning. Yeah, yeah. And so we went over to the uh, RAF officer's mess. And I was sitting there and, you know, having a pint because it was a bit hot and sweaty when suddenly uh, Anne went on my shoulder and said, boy oh, said, by God, if it isn't our walk. Oh. My name is William Oates oh, Goldthorpe. Goldthorpe. Ah. So you can guess so what you can I've guess been known been as known as else. medical school. <laughs> yeah. And so I turned around and there were two chaps, Flight Lieutenant Brian Waring and Flight Lieutenant Brian Chant, who'd been in the group of 40 yeah, with me, with who started straight in the second year at Manchester Medical School. They had discussions with their, uh, com their commanding officer, I can't remember his name, he was a squadron leader it would be. Yeah, yeah. And uh, the squadron leader and his wife, they didn't have his children, any children. Mm -hmm. So the squadron leader, not having to mother Sunday, but they mothered the flight lieutenants oh. and me. <laughs> and so it yeah. was arranged that I'd stay there for a bit. Oh, and, good. Uh, that I uh, stayed for a while looking after families. Right. While the other was dispersed elsewhere. Yes. Yeah. And I, uh, I don't know, I'd probably be there. Mm. Two or three months. Two or three months, right. And then my actual commanding officer was a chap called Donald Matheson, the lieutenant colonel. Yeah. And they needed somebody to go to uh, up country, about 80 miles up country, to a place called Dala, oh. in the, what was then known as the Western Aiden Protectorate. There were right. two protectorates, Western Aiden Protectorate and the Eastern Aiden Protectorate. See. Both those are now part of the Yemen. Yemen. Yeah. And Dala was close to the border with the Yemen, and there was yeah. trouble with the Yemenese, you know, yeah. and various other things. They didn't have a government then, they had a, 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 they had a, a local ru a ruler, like a sultan, uh, they were called a right. sultan. Yeah, yeah. But uh, 
he was he was an old guy, and when he died, I think they had a bit of a revolution and yeah. started uh, having some form of government. Then, yeah. Uh, and did, I, you, did you see a lot of conflict in Aden when you were there? I mean, was were there, there were a lot no, of casualties, it, or that, did you just, not see as much? I didn't see any where you were. No, no, where I was. No. Uh, but you, you looked after the general health of the people that were there. Yes, that was, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, there had been a, uh, one of the previous chaps in Dala, about 18 months before, mm. had had to go out because a, uh, a couple of platoons of the local, of the English lads had been ambushed in one of the wadis and two oh, or three yeah. of them killed and yeah. they'd had to go out uh, to recruit them and yeah. get them back. But there was nothing like that. And no. If they wanted me... If they wanted you to go somewhere, I'd say... Uh, they'd send, they'd send, send a couple of fellows. And yeah. They, they, I mean, everybody wore round arm to the teeth. Yeah, Not yeah. modern, right? They probably got Kalashnikovs there. But oh, then yeah. It, it was the old Martini Henry they oh, had. Oh, right. And uh, they, these were always highly decorated with silver. Yeah. And then, I, I think, uh, in the man, it's called a Ganjan. There's a different name, this big dagger, silver oh, dagger. Right. They'd always wear that and often a bell <coughs> of yeah. silver around them. So what you thought might be a scruffy to poverty street and arrow might have a pound or two of silver on it. Yeah, 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 <coughs> yeah. But they'd send <coughs> a couple of armed um, chaps and I'd go out in my little round land rover with its red crosses on. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> and my little land rover with its red crosses could go where yes. a squadron of Cyrus and armoured cars couldn't. couldn't. Yes, and, of course. Um, so sometimes they'd come for me. Yeah. And then on one occasion the political officer came and <coughs> he, um, he wanted me to go out to, it's, they thought they had an epi, what was it? They had, they had some sort of, they weren't, there was an epidemic in the children in, in this particular village and it was a dissident village. Yes. <clears throat> so I went with about a platoon of local, the, of the local Arab Emir's army. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and then they, we stopped outside and they sort of circled all around the uh, village in a sort of Ta in a way, almost a tactic, and then right. went around circuit, like, looking at every room and house. Yeah. And then I was allowed in. Right. <clears throat> and it, it wasn't the uh, condition, it was just a bad cold all around, I oh, think. Right. But we did find two kids with uh, chicken pox. Oh, right. And the, the last epidemic of yeah. smallpox was on the town. It started in Ethiopia, it yeah. crossed over to. Um, the Yemen proper, Isana, yeah. the capital, and was working its working way its down. down. And they were worried it would come down into the end protector and to end. Right, and and so yeah. I had to go and look at these kids. Well, they were far too chirpy, and I realised. Yeah. But <coughs> a well known local dissident, apparently to the political officers, yes. I dealt with him in that because two Arabs brought an unconscious young Arab in. Yeah. You know, the bloody hell was wrong with him. No. And, but he was unconscious, he was dehydrated, so uh, we gave him a drip and, yeah. uh, you know, uh, and, you know, started up on that, sort of wondering what to do. Yeah, yeah. And we must have given him a fair bit because he suddenly automatically peed out of his bladder. Oh, right. And it was about 11 o'clock at night, and one of the AAS. Liverpool, uh, these scouts lads ran up and said, it's pizza, it's a right funny colour, it's black. Oh. And I went and looked and I, and it already clicked because there's a thing called black water fever. Ah. And it indicates you've got cerebral malaria. Oh, I see, right. And so how do we treat this? Yeah. Well. I bet you've We've never come across to... that, had you before? No. No? I mean, it's only you haven't read about it. You've read it, about it, but yeah. You've realised what it was. Yeah, yeah. And we got chloroquine, which is tablets by mouth. Can you grind them down and dissolve them? Put them Try in. and get them in him, yeah. Uh, and then uh, sometimes there must be something in the uh, basket. Mm. So we emptied that basket, <laughs> right in the bottom was a 50cc of uh, Ampule of uh, quinine. Yeah. It was so old it had gone yellow. Oh, right. <laughs> so we got quinine, and uh, yeah. as I said to the lads, I said, Well, we, we're all right. 
<laughs> they might shoot us, but they won't sue us. <laughs> That's true. These days it's very different. <laughs> so we slapped in the quinine and next morning he was semi-conscious yeah. and he could take, we, we grabbed some tablets of yeah. water and gave him the chloroquine. So he started then coming about, around. Then he started coming around and yeah. I went sort of one morning, about three days later, yeah. gone. Gone. Oh, he just got up and left. And uh, and I just asked the fellows, and I, uh, you know, the, the, they are, and he said, oh, his pals went to the, because they, they always had to hand the guns in. Yes. Went to the, uh, went to the uh, guard room, they got the weapons, came and fetched him, they got him dressed, and they all walked away, oh. middle of the night. Right. <laughs> <laughs> About ten days later, I am in the uh, colonel's office. The political officers there. Oh, I see. And because and of this apparently dissident. the apparently uh, di the gentleman who with a cerebral malaria yeah. had been a dissident. He'd been trying to catch you for about the last three or four years. Oh, and you'd had him there, and they wanted. We'd had him in the <laughs> camp, and I'd treated him, got him better again. No wonder why they took him away in the night then. <laughs> and I must admit. Uh, well, of course, army, you weren't to know, were you? I mean, army <laughs> medical officers are not the ones to uh, no. sort of say yes or no, sir. Three bags full to colonels, <laughs> and it was a bit, yeah, a, bit, a little bit embarrassing. And I, <laughs> and, I and I think the colonel, the colonel, tell me he was going to get rid of me. Oh dear! So it was that serious, and, wasn't it? Uh, oh, I yeah. and. Uh, until the following uh, Monday, he went over the weekend and was called to his office. Uh, 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 on the Monday morning, and I said, I, I think I was just I still a lieutenant. Lieutenant Goldthorpe, I have been to see uh, your commanding officer, Lieutenant Colonel Gold, uh, Do uh, McDonald, Don uh, Donaldson, whatever it was called, yeah. I can't remember. And he said, and I have complained about you. Oh. And he's told me I'm bloody lucky to have you, so get out of here and I don't want to see either air of you again. <laughs>
What was British Somaliland has declared itself independent of Somalia. Oh, right. If you look at on the, get Somaliland up on this on the, your computer, you'll see. Yeah. Uh, and they do still have contacts here, yeah. but the problem is internationally. Yeah. Their independent state has not been recognised. Oh, right. So they are still painted with the same brush as the Italian Somalis. Right. But uh, I liked that. Uh, that was that was there for six months. Six months, right. And then there was. Uh, well, I was only a couple of. Not, I wasn't very long with the Ten Brigade Group Medical Company. I detested that. I detested the bloody colonel oh. who became a major general. Oh. <laughs> So my yeah, assessment of people isn't very good, is it? And then I was on the Jebel Akta, which is about ten thousand, which is six to ten thousand feet plateau right. in the Oman. Yeah. And then I went to Dubai and Sharjah ah, before they found before oil. Before they found the oil. Yeah. So was that desert mainly then, or was yeah, the no yeah. hardly anything there? Wow. Well, I bet now then you'd see the difference. Oh, I can see the difference yeah, now. Yeah. And then I was back in Little Aden for a bit, yeah. but I managed to wangle, you know, you're not supposed to do it, mm. uh, but that, I managed to wangle a trip to Kenya. Kenya, ah, right. Where I had a cousin, uh, yeah. so I, uh, I got all I wanted there. Oh, good. Because I think one of the veterans told us that if you got a, a posting to Hong Kong, it was seen as a cushy number. Oh, it there was. Wasn't, and, and one of the veterans we interviewed this week um, he went to um, Singapore, and they st they went out into Malaysia into the jungle. Oh, that was which was pretty unpleasant from yeah, what he told yeah. us. Yeah, I mean, but in I, Singapore apparently though it was mainly they had a good time yeah. when they were there. I uh, a distant cousin of mine is a professor of music in Ontario, and his father, yes, it's his father. But he'd be about five years older than me, did his national service in Malaysia. Yeah. And he and he, he didn't know his father didn't know what he'd been in so many early situations, he didn't know my but his father had been mentioned in dispatches. Oh right. You know, that's the gold leaf the, on the oh, medal. Yeah, yeah. And the interesting thing is that uh, his grandfather was in, uh, from Australia, was in the First World War as a medical medic. And he was mentioned in dispatches okay. as well. Wow. And he showed me that mentioned in dispatches. And it mentions Hague. Yeah. And at the bottom it signed Secretary of State Winston Churchill. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, we learnt all that. No. Did, 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 were you given a medal when you came out? Oh, for I got your a service? general service medal. Yeah. Which I found I was entitled to when I was 70 years old. You only found out then? <laughs> so how come you... You've never known before then, did they well, not tell you? Well, nobody told me. Oh, I dear. think saving money. Saving money. <laughs> and did you ever think about going back into the forces afterwards, or did it never... No, no, I, I, my idea was to be an, a consultant in yeah. the UK. I, I knew when I, quit, I started training, I, might, I mean, they, it was difficult then. Yeah. Uh, they hadn't expanded the health service in ten years. No. And there were pe a large number of our lads yeah. went abroad to America, ah, Canada, right. and Australia. Yeah. You sort of realise if you got to a registrar at a certain point and you couldn't get through you the senior yeah. registrar, yeah. you'd go abroad. You'd go abroad. And I, my wife had accepted that, yes. and uh, that's what would have happened. If so they, you'd have probably done the same, would you? I would have done the same, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But she, I mean, the, the senior registrar post I got, They'd done the first expansion and yeah. the, the number of senior registrars had been increased from four yeah. to uh, six and right. I got one of those. Yes. But yeah. when you think that the, they used to have, what, uh, the senior registrar was supposed to be a four per year post after which he became a consultant. Yeah. And when I first started training, the what they call time expired senior registrars, these chaps had been senior registrars for six, seven, Years oh, really? before they could become a ah. consultant, which meant there was no. And would they be still doing exams and studies while they were doing? Yeah. And know, there's so nobody registrars ah. that they've got their exams and their experience to follow to up. To follow up, yeah. And yeah. so it meant, I mean, 
I must admit, when I qualified, I just thought, why, why have I bothered? Because yeah. there were no jobs available. No jobs, no. And when I came out, there were jobs all over the place because yeah. uh, people who wanted to become GPs had all disappeared. All dis yeah. And the yeah. registrar had all disappeared. And if we hadn't had a pile of Indian lights coming in, yeah. the health service would have crashed. Would have, would have collapsed, yeah.